updated, my sister and mother demand I watch their new baby three days a week. My 25 female younger sister, 21 female, is pretty pregnant, and for the last few weeks, she has been demanding that my significant other, 27 male, and I babysit her newborn every weekend, Friday morning to Sunday evening, so she and her significant other, 21 male, can have some cool time off from being parents, just to not overstress. Each time, I've laughed at her and shut it down with a quick, nope, I won't be, and she gets mad I'm not helping her out. Yesterday, she got our mother involved. And mom called me and asked me why I was being a self-centered witch and so selfish and that she didn't raise me this way. I told her I'm a grown woman with my own house and life and that if I wanted to watch kids as a second job, I'd freaking have some. She sputtered out something about me being a horrible person then hung up on me. My significant other and my one aunt 100% is with me. However, my mom, dad and the other 900 family members and friends, they got involved or calling me out on Facebook and blowing up my phone quick edit for a few of the same comments coming up. My mom knows the full story for what my sister is asking. She essentially did the same thing with me when I was a bit older. She sees no wishes with my sister getting this as well. I've never had a good relationship with my family, besides 16 female sister, aunt, and grandparents. I talk to mom, sister, dad, maybe twice a month. Now for the top comments before reading the update. Your mom, dad, and the other 900 family members can watch their kid then. Problem solved. This. Tell them to freaking do it themselves. They as grandparents need to be doing it for their grandkids, not you. I am a grandma of three and another one in November. I take the kids whenever I can have them, but that is my choice. Stand your ground. You don't get weekends off from being a parent. Paraphrasing another saying I've heard. Raising children is like fighting a gorilla. You don't get to stop when you're tired. Lol, what? So let me get this straight. Your sister and her significant other are having a baby, but they want every weekend off so they can have fun while you watch their child? Every weekend? Yeah, sounds like they should have thought twice before getting her pregnant. That is not how that works. I had my son at 21, and guess what I did at most weekends? It's called being a parent. Ridiculous entitled nonsense is what I'd call your sister's behavior, and I absolutely fail to understand why your family's agreeing with her. If your parents think she should have every weekend off, they can watch the child. Oh yeah, my cousin has three kids, and guess what she doesn't have for the past 12 years? Right, a free weekend. Everyone is lucky if they have grandparents to watch the kids for an afternoon, but if you sign up for the little ones, then you know that some freedoms are gone for a while. To be fair, a free weekend every now and then is very nice, and I would have gone bonkers during 12 years without one. I don't think it's unreasonable to ask for a favor sometimes. But I ask my friends and family if they could possibly watch the kids for an evening or the weekend. Occasionally. Like someone who's well aware that this is a favor. What sane person expects someone else to take care of their child every weekend? Given the fact that mom immediately had her back on the idea, I'm going with someone who has probably gotten away with making various unreasonable demands a lot in the past 21 years. And now for the update. Hey everyone, thank you so much for the support on my last post. Thought I'd share an update and answer some questions now that the baby's here. A lot of comments mentioned that our mother and sister probably spun some sort of tale about how I was just refusing to help, period not take over 45% of parenting. And, well, no. Those who I spoke to knew the entire story. They agreed that two 21-year-olds need a break from parenting. Our mom did it with me, so why should sister get the same courtesy? Whenever family slash friends message me about babysitting or give me crap about it, my favorite response has been, you're right, I am selfish slash irresponsible slash whatever and probably not fit to take the baby this weekend. But I can be sure to let sister know you volunteered your time this week to help her out. Funny enough, everyone seems to have some generic excuse as to why they can't or won't. I worked all week, it's my wind down time. Not my child, not my responsibility, but somehow it's mine? And my all time favorite response, it is your responsibility as the oldest to ensure your siblings don't make mistakes. And if they do, you take responsibility and don't let them ruin their lives over it. They're still kids who need to have fun. You had your turn. People of AITA and r slash entitled parents, 
Please take a moment and reread that last response. What would your reaction or response be? Baby has been here just under two weeks now, and my sister, her significant other, and our mother have left multiple messages and voicemails about when they will drop the baby off, their expectations for when I have the baby, routines, etc. And besides a quick not watching your baby this weekend, I have not answered or responded about it. Then my significant other and I took some advice and invested in a doorbell camera and a few others around the house. And as most of you called it, my mother and sister attempted to drop the baby off at my doorstep six days after it was born, knocked, and tried to run. I spoke through the doorbell and told them they have exactly two minutes to pick baby back up, or I was calling CPS for abandonment. My younger sister, 16 female, called me about an hour afterwards, explaining that our mother had attempted to leave the baby with her as well, but it only earned mommy dirty look, while youngest sister simply stepped over the carrier and walked out of the house. She has been staying with us since. Significant other and I have spoken to younger sister to see how she would feel, and we have a meeting with a lawyer to see if we have any ground to stand on for sister to come and live with us permanently, as our parents are threatened to call the police on my significant other and I for kidnapping slash holding younger sister as a hostage. Oh, before I forget this level of beautiful pettiness, our aunt, the only one who has supported us, surprised younger sister, significant other and I and took us out to her cabin for the weekend, where our youngest sister posted pictures and tagged our mother, sister and her significant other. Man, such an amazing weekend. Sure wish you guys were free to join. Edit. A few commenters mentioned wanting to know more about the doorbell reaction, so... Neither of them knew about the doorbell. It was a mix of shocked Pikachu and some kind of ragey raccoon faces that they didn't just get away with it. My mother started to argue, but I cut her off by starting to count down. My sister quickly picked up the baby and they both left without another word. I would highly recommend that you consider calling CPS and reporting that they even attempted to leave a six-day-old child with you via Ding Dong Ditch. Hopefully this was the last of it, but have it reported and on file. So if it continues, there is a pattern of neglect there to back your side. Absolutely. I turn over the doorbell video as all the evidence they need. That girl should not be allowed to care for that child. I have a feeling something awful is going to happen to it, and they're going to blame Opie for not taking on some of the care. What awful people to have as your family. I'd include copies of the text messages and emails where Opie clearly stated that they would not watch the baby this weekend, and then a clip of them dropping and running away. What if Opie and their significant other had left for the weekend to avoid them, instead of installing the camera? Who knows how long the baby could have been laying there before they were found? But the fact that you're taking your younger sister shows what a wonderful person you are. I hope everything goes well with the lawyer's office. Please add a second update about how your appointment goes. Agreed. She doesn't have to worry about her 16-year-old sister becoming an involuntary nanny. Bonus? It also frees up Opie's mom to watch the grandbaby on the weekend. Because now Opie's helping with a kid, just not the kid they want. This is crazy. How the hell do you just drop off your newborn? I had both my kids by the time I was 21. I got my girlfriend pregnant twice. I was slash an idiot. And we rarely use babysitters. We both worked full-time jobs. She worked during the day and I worked at night. My mom used to come over every once in a while and take the kids because she never got to see them. Not in a bad way. We just handled our own mess and my mom wanted to see her grandbabies. It might have been different if my mom had watched them all the time, but then it would be more like a chore and not a day out with her grandkids. They need to grow up. And your younger sister deserves a chance to be a kid, not a live-in nanny for her lazy sister. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for not sharing my nanny with the family? First of all, I do not have a nanny. I have an amazing best friend named Willow. I also have four children, ages 12 to 1. Willow is childless and does not like kids. She does, however, love mine and they all adore her. Even my bonus baby girl cries when she leaves to go home. She will always offer to watch the kiddos if you want some alone time and has kept them overnight more than once. Now, every summer, my husband's family likes to rent cabins by the river, and Willow usually tags along. By day three, she offers to hang out with the kids at the cabin. I know her well enough to know that she is usually done with the son, the water and brother-in-law hitting on her by this time. She always says that this time with her godkids is the real reason why she comes. This year, when the restrictions were lifted in our state, we came up to the lake. At around 10, 
The baby was asleep on Willow. The adults were drinking. She does not. And brother-in-law was being creepy. So she announced that she was tired and offered to take the kids back to the cabin. Day three comes, and she, of course, asks if she can have the kids for the day. Later on, on the lake, sister-in-law made a joke about asking Willow to watch all the kids tomorrow, but we left it off. When we came back that evening, the kids announced that they were camping out in the living room with Aunt Willow. He asked Willow if she minded if we just went out to the resort lounge, and she was quite happy to kick us out. The morning of checkout, Willow made breakfast because it was her turn, and, of course, my sister-in-law had to comment, You cook for them too? Wow. After we returned, I got a text from my sister-in-law calling me a snob for bringing our nanny on the trip. I told her that Willow was not my nanny and that she paid her own way. She then called me a witch because I saw that they were all tired and frazzled and that I could have at least asked Willow to watch all of the kids. I told her she was crazy and I wasn't going to ask my best friend to watch 12 children. She doesn't even like children. My mother-in-law called soon after to apologize and ask for Willow's number. She told me that maybe if she paid Willow to watch my sister-in-law's kids for a night, she would get over her jealousy. She then proceeded to lay out a plan where my best friend would be passed around like some kind of... mammy. This would probably be a good time to mention that my best friend is black. I just hung up on her. My husband thinks that I should have at least asked Willow before I said no. I told him that I wasn't going to put her in that kind of position. He is downstairs right now, still trying to placate his mother. I can't ask any of my siblings' perspective because I know that they are also jealous of the kind of friendship that Willow and I have. Now I am torn. Maybe I should have asked her if she wanted to help out. Did I overreact? Am I the a-hole? Edit. To clear a few things up. Both brother-in-law and sister-in-law are my husband's biological brother and sister. His two brothers and sister were on the trip. Sister-in-law is the harpy and brother-in-law is the newly divorced brother. I had to cut it out to make the word count. She genuinely loves my children. She messages me her days off asking to babysit. She'll ask to pick up the baby from the daycare and frequently takes all the kids out on adventures. You don't have to tell me how lucky I am, but maybe it's time I told her how much I appreciate having her in my life. The part about her cooking breakfast does sound a little unfair, but she makes the most amazing pecan caramel cinnamon rolls and it's become sort of a tradition for her to make them for the kids. As for the harassment from my idiot brother-in-law, Willow and I have been friends since college, and she is tall, confident, and she is very well endowed, both at the front and the back. People stare at her often, and men hit on her all the time. For some reason, when she walks in a room, men just turn stupid. Most of the time, she takes the comments in stride, but for some reason, this year, he was just laying it on hard. This, however, is no excuse and just because this is something that she deals with on a daily, it doesn't mean that she should have to deal with it on vacation. I accept the a-hole ruling for that one, and I'll ask my husband to talk to his brother. I've decided to talk to Willow this evening and show her this entire thread. Maybe post an update. Thank you all. Now for the top comments before reading the update. If they want to recruit your friend as their childcare provider, they can ask themselves and not ruin your relationship with her. Just want to check? Why does Opie allow her brother to be creepy to her best friend over and over and over again? Why are you putting that in Opie instead of her husband, his brother? Exactly what I was thinking. Opie isn't responsible for brother-in-law's actions. Brother-in-law should stop being creepy because he's an adult and knows how to conduct himself. Not day hall. First, as your friend, I'd appreciate you keeping this boundary if I were Willow. It's nice you know she's a friend and showed it. It's childish your family gets jealous. That's for them to work through their feelings, not for you to placate at the expense of your friend's dignity. They can find a nanny anywhere if they want. Secondly, as a person of color myself, it would add a whole dimension to pass her number around as a nanny. Is that her day job? Otherwise, it's totally out of line. Mother-in-law's insane to think she can hire someone to placate your sister-in-law. Like, huh? She's not some doll or property to be passed around. Sounds like a bad episode of The Help. As if the movie isn't bad enough. Screw them, people. Keep having your friends back. And if you ever tell Willow, it should be to laugh at them. But it would make things uncomfortable for her. I suggest not allowing her to try placating them and babysitting, etc. She likes her godkids. That's her only duty here, in my humble opinion. 
if she's a nanny by profession, it's different. You can ask if she wants new clients. But I wouldn't even. People who are entitled will be rude. And it would put your friend in a bad work environment and risk your friendship. I'd also say to give your friend a heads up like, Hey, my family is being freaking crazy and are giving the impression that they want to ask you to sit their kids. I've told them no and to buzz off. But so you aren't blindsided, I'm letting you know. I don't know. Giving her a heads up in case they go behind your back and ask her, then turn it around on you saying you said it was okay to ask. Entitled people are crazy. And if they're about to look like fools, they'll put the blame onto someone else. Not day hell, by the way. And now for the first update. Well, the conversations with his family went as expected. Sister-in-law was apparently holding a grudge from when we went to Vegas for five days in January, and we all kept our kids. We also like to post our date nights in social media, and in her eyes, it's just, and I literally quote, not fair. Reasoning with mother-in-law was like beating my head against a brick wall. She couldn't understand why it was insulting, and thought it was a fantastic way for her to make extra money. The brother-in-law fake apologized for his behavior, citing he was stigmatized, and have you seen her bro? Then he formally asked my husband for his permission to bang his wife's hot black friend. I took the phone, that was on speaker, told him to go screw himself, and hung up. I met Willow in a couple of hours, and I'm so guilt-ridden, anxious, and just plain angry at myself. I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to hand her my phone and just let her read a thread. And now for the final update. Willow came over this evening, and she read pretty much the entire thread. She then told me some of the disgusting comments that she has had to endure from all of the men in his family over the years. She was even jokingly offered money once for just one night of fun. I asked her why she never said anything, and she told me that she was used to it and did not want to bother me. I flat out asked her if any of them had ever touched her inappropriately. She wouldn't give me a straight answer, and I don't want to push it. She was so nonchalant about everything, and all I wanted to do was cry, because even when she was the person wronged, she still tries to protect me. I told her I was so sorry for everything, and that she is under no obligation to be my babysitter, spare my feelings, or put up with my toxic in-laws. I apologized for my complacency in all of this mess, and let her know that I loved her and appreciated all the things that she does for my family. We hung out, we laughed, and we cried just like in college. My husband and I both told her that this was our last trip with his family, but whatever decide to for vacation next summer, she is more than welcome to come, as our guest, and she's not allowed to pay for anything, but she doesn't know that yet because she would decline. I know I'm lucky to have her. She is like my sister, and I'm going to start being as good as a friend to her as she is to me. Once again, thank you for all of your insight. I appreciate it more than you know.